I'm bloody ticked off. Simon Mandrel. Oh, jeez, it's ticked off, Tom. Jeez, have I got a doozy for you today, Fresh Fam? Privacy screens. These get me bouncing off the walls, Callum. If there's nothing that screams, wow, Tom's turned into a 70-year-old boomer, <laughs> it's the idea that you're doing a segment about being pissed off, one, but the fact that it's also about technology now. Yeah. Technology and being pissed off goes hand in hand that you're an old man these days. Look, I mean, if you don't know what I'm talking about, privacy screens, you can't look at someone's phone, basically, unless you're directly in front of it. So if you're off to the side or above it or below it, it's just black. It looks like the phone is turned off. Mm, yeah, yeah. And you have to be directly in front of it. Now, this is technology that I think should be reserved for the leaders of the free world or <laughs> MI5 or Santa Claus, for goodness sakes. But not for some Joe Blow like Kelly from Sales. I mean, what's... You hear that, Kelly? <laughs> What's I up? don't care what you're having for dinner or what you think friends think of Taylor Swift. What is you don't you... need a privacy screen to hide that from me. I what don't has care. Got, what has got you in this mess? Like, what is so bad about the privacy screen? What is uh, uh, what set me off about the privacy screen is uh, one person who absolutely should not have a privacy screen. Our social media man Gavin, and I really hope he's listening and uh, changes his screen because it, obviously, being the social media man, he's always showing us stuff on his phone. Yeah. But if you're not directly in eye line with him, you just can't see it. And he's trying to show me a video with three other people the other day when we were out for lunch. And we're all sitting around this table. It's a round table. So I'm like, you know, already leaning over as it is. Mm. And I can't see a bloody thing because he's got a privacy screen on. So then we had to watch the video three times over to be able to show everybody. Well, you have to do the rotating so everyone yeah. can actually get the angle or you crowd around. You're just probably By looking at By the time at it. it got to my turn, I was like, I just don't care anymore, <laughs> mate. Gavin, is uh, Fresh doing a video on black holes in space? Because this thing is pitch black. What's happening? <laughs> I am ticked off. Tom today. Privacy screens, get rid of them, save them for, you know, the President of the United States or, you know, the Prime Minister of Australia. Maybe, Just, maybe no Gavin's, one needs him. Maybe Gavin's got some dicey stuff he doesn't want people to see. Oh, maybe, I'm sure maybe he does. You, maybe you don't but, want to see him. But he I don't, could be I don't, doing don't, you a favour. I don't care, though. I'm not looking at your phone trying to snoop, snoop. all the time. <laughs> Who's doing that? Nobody. <laughs> If you haven't been keeping up with the Royals, no one blames you, but you might have not heard Kate Middleton's actually been missing. Mm, yeah. So she's been missing since Christmas and no one knows where she's been. The royal family released a statement saying she was undergoing a surgery. Wouldn't, yeah. Wouldn't yep. specify what kind of surgery, but she was just spotted the other day. March 4th, she was spotted in the car with her mum driving her around. And to everyone who would look at this and think this situation is normal, congratulations to you. Luckily, we see through the veil, Tom. Yeah, you've been brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> we see through the glass window into reality, and that's why we're doing this. And that is why Pluto is a dwarf planet. Any questions? Yeah. How about you stop telling all these kids lies? We all know Pluto's home to one-eighth of the galaxy's water supply. That's why everyone doesn't want their hands on it, so we put it in the category as a dwarf planet so no one notices it, and these greedy corporations can get their water supply. Isn't it? Conspiracy theories with Callum. Listen to everything he says. Yeah, if you think, uh, if you think that was weird... Uh, it's <laughs> It's, it's, something, back. it's something that we're, we're bringing back, yeah, uh, because I feel like it warrants it, Tom. I mean, mm. you know, we're putting our sleuth hats on. We're trying to work this one out. It is a little bit of a conspiracy. There's some odd rumours as to where Kate Middleton is. That's it. The internet has gone absolutely bonkers saying where they think uh, Kate Middleton might have been. Some of them are theorising that the surgery she went under was a BBL, which is a Brazilian butt lift. <laughs> And then others are saying, no, no, no. If she had the Brazilian butt lift, she wouldn't be sitting down in the car. She'd be yeah. on the back seat lying on her stomach. Strapped to the roof racks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, pressure, no pressure on the buttocks. It would have been a completely different picture. But that's just one of the tamer theories going around. Yeah, well, it's interesting you say the Brazilian butt lift because in terms of surgeries as well, I guess, you know, maybe the royals don't want to associate with being too aesthetically conscious or mm. superficial, so they won't want to... Uh, 
uh, expose any cosmetic surgeries. There's also rumours that facelifts have been involved. Yes. Um, boob jobs, things like that. So different types of surgeries. One of the theories is that she's actually uh, dead. Dead. And, dead and is the big one. Dead is where it gets quite over the line because she is in the car in the picture. Yeah, so the, the in the in the picture of her in the car... They're saying that's not actually her. That's the wax body from Madame Tussauds. Jeez. And it's missing the mole above her lip. And that's what people are theorising. This is just a wax figure. It's not actually Kate Middleton. Wow. I mean, the mole is pretty The mole is pretty indicative, isn't it? Imagine being like some intern at Madame Tussauds and you get a call up from the royals. It's like, hey, by the way. Uh, can we have can the we, can wax we figure? borrow the wax figure? And they're what like, for? We don't, don't worry. We don't usually lend the wax figure to people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you know, it would sound a little bit odd. Uh, otherwise, there's rumours that she might be divorcing William and going into a hideout for a little bit, just laying mm, low. Doing a gone girl situation, a few yeah. people are saying. I mean, I don't know. Personally, if I were to theorise, I'm thinking like, you know, this was her conversion. She mm. is turning into lizard person. Oh, now. going into the true royal joining, form. Joining, <laughs> joining, joining the, rest the rest of the clan. Of She's finally <laughs> been accepted. We've got content director Sophie on the mic. She asked me not to say the lizard theory, but yes, I did. It was crazy not to bring it up, at least mention. Sophie, what do you think? Where do you reckon she okay. is? Okay, so some of the best ones I've read is that she's waiting for her bad bangs to grow out, because that is why I would um, hide too. Well, you go into hiding for yeah. bad bangs? Yes, yes, you would. I don't know if they're allowed to have bangs in the royal family. Oh, God, maybe, too... maybe that's why she's gone into hiding. Yeah, okay, or else um, she's on the mission to the moon. Oh, mm. yep. okay. A game of hide and seek got out of hand. Love that right. one. <laughs> Or she's dating Pete Davidson oh. um, because that's what you do, like Kim Kardashian went in hiding and because you go mm. away because you're so in love with them. Then you come back out. Mm. Or she's being cloned. That cloned. one I can believe. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that one, not the lizard one as much. So many texts coming through right now. Somebody has uh, texted in saying, I may be a bit of rehab or mental institution for her problems trying to cope with Shrek and Donkey as her in-laws. True. Maybe. <laughs> Someone is said, in the uh, Shrek 2 <laughs> reference. Almost 20 years old, that movie. It's, yeah, anniversary. Hey, uh, another text here. There's not been a single Banksy since her being gone. Mm, <laughs> interesting. Could Kate Middleton be Banksy? <laughs> another one here. Kate is on the, the best season of Survivor, so has gone away for filming. All right. Yeah. All right. It's interesting that one's come through because someone else has said maybe she's on a foreign big brother that nobody's watching. Yeah. <laughs> she there's, could just there's be. There's another one. Someone says she's on The Masked Singer. Is everyone <laughs> jumping on the reality shows? I think it would be in a least bit of interest to do reality TV. Somebody else has texted in here saying she's absolutely gone and done a three month course in DJ production and has resurfaced as DJ Kate in the middle a ton. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay. I don't know what that's trying to <laughs> reference. <laughs> And this one here, Tom, it's a bit out there. I heard Kate Middleton's got a bad rash that turned out to be a herpes she's trying to deal with. Jeez. That's hardcore. <laughs> that is hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> another, another conspiracy theory here. She's binging all of the seasons of The Crown and enjoying it a little too hey, much. Hey, it could be that. Doing a little bit of research, trying to come back in yeah. well-read, well-watched. Yeah. <laughs> I love this one here. Back to the haircut theory. Maybe it's a bad haircut. Probably has to grow out some bad colouring. The royals love how they look. Tom, there's certain things that should just never get banned in Australia. You know, eating Vegemite, mm -hmm. wearing those paper party hats at Christmas, <laughs> road <Yeah>. rage. <laughs> <laughs> all these... all these Qualities like, that make up the best kind of Australian. Exactly right, you know. <laughs> but one of the big ones that should never get banned is having a barbecue. But yeah, exactly, absolutely. exactly this has happened. That's our right. It is. It is a right to passage. You know, you grow up in Australia from being a young tucker having barbecues and, you know, it's just a regular thing. It's yeah. a part of our culture. But over... Going through puberty means taking over the barbecue from your dad. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> when you get handed those tongs, it's a, yeah. it's a sign of the takeover yeah. as the leader of the house. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> but uh, over in Perth, it's actually happened. Someone's been banned from the barbecue because... An Australian lady has actually sued her neighbour for doing too many barbecues in his backyard. Oh, get off it. What do you mean, too many barbecues? Well, this comes from the fact that she's a vegan oh. and she finds the smell really unpleasant. 
Uh, oh. So she finds the smell of, like, you know, cooked meat too unpleasant that it wafts into her backyard, into the house, and she's just had enough. Try hanging like, out inside. Get out of the backyard when they're having a barbecue then. Yeah, literally. Like, you it, can't sue someone over the smell of their barbecue. No, no, it's crazy. Like, it's absolutely insane that it's even got to the legal level, right? Yeah, that yeah. she's saying, oh, it's a mild inconvenience for me. <laughs> it's an interference. It reeks the backyard. Um, so she's gone to the courts. And she's even, like, doubled down and she said, not only do I not like the barbecue, but I, while I'm at it, she just keeps adding all these things. She's like, also, while I'm at while it, I'm I, don't, I don't really like the cigarette smoke either. Like, it's like she's taking it for a run. As soon as she got it to court, she's like, oh, geez, that actually worked. You know what? You could fix up the parking out in front of my house. Yeah. Surely, yeah. Uh, while you're here, get the council over. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, this tree's really bugging me. It's, yeah, you know, it's grown the... out too much. Yeah. I don't have pruners. Blocking the sunlight. No, but she has complained about the barbecue and then she's complained about the cigarette smoke wafting over and then she has complained get this about the guys kids playing too much barbecue and making i'm sorry playing too much basketball and then making too much noise in the backyard so she's gone who's this the neighbor from hell she's gone for an absolute ride and this is happening over in perth of course not adelaide yeah (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God, could you imagine if this was your neighbour? Oh, well, there's there's no way of pleasing this person no, by the sounds no, of it. absolutely not. They're always going to find something to complain about, whether it's the smell of beautifully smoked meats coming yeah. from your backyard or your kids playing basketball. Yeah, your grass smells too watery. Well, <laughs> just, I feel like the complaints would just go too extreme. But What kind of sport do you reckon she'd be more happy the kids playing, like croquet or something? I think she'd rather Lawn play marbles or something. A light <laughs> tapping sound, a light, just some kids loitering with some marbles, a light tapping sound would do a hell of, hell of a lot better for her than a big basketball. But this legal case has gone on since 2017, Tom. Since probably, 2017? Probably because the, the courts don't give a crap. They're just like, they've put it on hold. How can they not just be like, this is ridiculous, we are, we, we're dropping this I case? Know, it's probably just in the back burner, but apparently the dude has removed the barbecue, so sad. Oh, really? Sad condolences to the Australian rights of the barbecue. He's gotten rid of it just because of all this kerfuffle. That's that's not okay. Yeah. Uh, Petitions have to be made. Help this man. Send him a barbecue right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dealership over in Las Vegas. It's called uh, the Vegas Auto Gallery. Yep. And they have a pretty uh, pretty fun little thing you can do if you head to their dealership. Yeah, okay. I mean, the most fun you'll have at a dealership is seeing a bowl of mints or something, what? you know, <laughs> like fresh... <laughs> like fresh breath mints. Like, there's nothing, You've mon- never been there's to a nothing that much fun you? at a dealership, though. What do you mean is there? test drives? Oh, you can do test drives. But other than that, you just that's sit way by, more fun than a bowl of mints. You sit by a water cooler. Like, there's magazines. It I thought you meant like mints meat as no, well. God, no. <laughs> what kind of, where are you going? <laughs> what kind man? Of weird ass dealership. Yeah. No, but it just seems like a you know general office, right? It does like nothing much nah, really happens. I, I, I disagree. You All get right, to well, sit in sit in some cool cars, like really expensive cars. You know you can't afford, but you'll sit in them and just lie, sit there with a monocle on your eye. Yeah, yeah. I could, get, I could get this one. You know, take take a car that isn't yours for a test drive. There's nothing more thrilling than driving someone else's car. Mm. But there is, over in Las Vegas, this dealership, they have cyber trucks there. Now, if you're not aware of a cyber truck, it is the new addition to the Tesla automotives. Of yeah. course, they're all the electric cars uh, by Elon Musk. Yeah, the the cyber trucks are doing the rounds at the moment. They've gotten a lot more popular. You're seeing they've only every, just released. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing a lot more people online driving them around. They are pretty humongous, strong mm. looking, well built. Well, they're they're meant to have this amazing durability. You know, the the windows are bulletproof. You know, you, yeah. They they said they. I mean, it kind of threw back in Elon Musk's face when he first announced the cyber truck in 2019 and threw a brick at the window and it shattered everywhere. But Mm. since then, they have made upgrades. It is now out to the public. And yes, you can throw a brick at the window and it will bounce back. It is bulletproof glass. And this dealership, they invite people to come down, look at the Cybertruck and bash it with a metal bat. Hammer into it. Yeah. Right. Just give it, give it your best shot. They, they, they give you a metal bat, baseball bat, and you can go up to the cyber truck and hit it and see if you can damage it. But it just doesn't every time. You know, you can take a sledgehammer to this truck and it won't scratch. It doesn't bend. It doesn't dent. Well, I mean, it's a good marketing technique, though, isn't right, it? Right, to get you to the dealership. If, if, if you're a dealership owner and you're absolutely confident it's not going to break anything, 
What's you know that's going to be what's getting you over the line to sign up and buy a cyber truck though, isn't it? If you're oh, going well, it's there, it's not even a cyber truck. You can just go there to hit the cyber truck, and then you can end up buying another car. Yeah, just like it's one of those rage rooms that we have <laughs> where you go and throw the plates and everything to let off a bit of steam. Like you just go there, <laughs> vent a little bit, punch the cyber truck up, and then get a different car. Sir, you come here once a day for the last four weeks. <laughs> you, you cannot keep coming here unless you buy a car. You clearly don't want a car. You're just coming here because you got some uh, marriage issues. Give me the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Hey, great classic game show. Been around a long time. Love to see it. Yeah, so it's uh, the UK version hosted by uh, Jeremy Clarks, and it's actually back from 2020. It's a clip from the show that's just recently resurfaced and causing uh, pandemonium, i got to mm. say. It's racked up three and a, three and a half thousand views and heaps of comments after being resurfaced well uh yeah you don't see too many controversies on who wants to be a millionaire you know it's a pretty tame show family friendly nothing much can go wrong right well that's what you would think right but no (laughs) yes something went pretty wrong in this clip contestant uh jp he's up to a question he's not very far in so it's not like a do or die sort of question Mm, yeah but he's got the question which of these days is part of the weekend in Germany? And the options were Donnerstag, Mittwoch, Sonntag, or Dienstag. Yeah, immediately, if I was in that situation, you'd be thinking, crap, this yeah. is this is, uh, this is above my pay grade. Yeah. German? Like, <laughs> it's, even though it's not that far into the game, you think, oh, this seems like a bit of a tricky one. So he's, yeah, exactly, that's what he's thought. So he's decided, you know what, I'm going to phone a friend here. Mm. And he decides, I'm going to phone my wife. Yeah, okay. Right? See if she can help with the question. So Jeremy Clarkson goes, all right, let's phone Let's phone your wife then. Phone rings, she answers, and get this. It's a man's voice. A man. A man's voice picks up the phone. And it's not, you it's know, not a his wife or... Nah, he, they, they immediately hang up. Jeremy Clarkson goes... That was a man who just answered your phone. I love Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> hamming down on it. The guy doesn't want want it to be reiterated on yeah. TV, but Jeremy's like, yeah, you, you, you realise that, right? That was a guy. That's not meant to be a guy in the house with your wife, right? Yeah, as he says it, the crowd <laughs> gasps in anticipation. Oh, my God, what's just happened? And they go, "He's he looks shocked as well. He, mm. he looks shocked. He's he's looking scared like, oh, my God, what's going on? He's so, been humiliated on live TV. So they redial and... The wife picked up. It was all good. It was an automated voicemail. Jeez. (laughs) One of the most tense situations of your life. You think your wife is shacking up with a bloke and it gets exposed (laughs) on live TV. Yeah, it was just an automated message. (laughs) And they hung up before they could figure out that it was an automated message. I would have been surprised if the guy is still angry and Jeremy's trying to calm him down. He's like, it's an automated message. Don't worry, it's a robot. He's like, who is he? (laughs) Still going down the throat. (laughs) Uh, uh, By the way, it was Sontag was the answer. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, there you Sonntag, go. Hey. one of the days of the weekend in German. Bit of water cooler knowledge for you? 